Hi, it's Kernetex here with a step-by-step -step guide on how to install Linux from scratch 10.1. So Linux from scratch 10.1 has been released today, March 1st. And um, the way I'm going to do this this time is to show how to install it on a, a machine that's completely blank, that's got no operating system on it. Um, if you're interested in other methods that I've covered for installing Linux from scratch, then see my channel. Um, I've installed it alongside Windows. I've installed it alongside um, an older version of Linux from scratch and so on. So um, just take a look there if, you, if you've got, for example, a machine with another operating system on that you want to put Linux from scratch alongside it. Or if you want to install it remotely via SSH, um, take a look to see my um, other videos. So if you've never installed Linux from scratch before I'll try and take you some of them through some of the more important steps to, and point out places that um, it seems that people trip up on quite commonly. I've noticed in the book over the years that they've added more and more notes obviously um, identifying where people um, either make mistakes or don't read certain things so I'll point them out because they are important these there's there's subtle commands maybe you might miss out that can affect the whole build the success of the whole build so Linux and scratch in case you don't know what it is it's a well kind of a distribution um, it's basically a book really um, the responsibility is on you to get the sources the source code and build it right from scratch so it's not like a normal distribution where you get a, an image like a CD or USB image um, and you just install it on the machine you, you have to get the all the files yourself and build them all yourself and install them all yourself and uh, the start of the book is a bit of the history behind it how it came about um, what the audience is as, as by the way as I go through this book I won't be reading every single word I'll just sort of guide through it um, and I'll just concentrate on the important points, but I would highly recommend that you read the book at least once and maybe several times, especially these chapters where there's um, paragraphs of information to read. The actual pages with the instructions compiling, not as important to read them first off, although it would help. Um, and of course, Linux and Scratch is a educational distribution, so by reading about the packages you're obviously learning about what those packages do and where they sit in a Linux system so yeah like I say there's the audience there who, who wants to use or build Linux from scratch uh, the architectures the book targets is 32-bit Intel stroke AMD and 64-bit Intel and AMD and they give a sort of guideline of the time and size of the distribution once it's built. <clears throat> now I have to say some of these figures you'll see in this book they don't get updated that often. You can actually see that this was built on a, a 4000 series i7 so that's you know, a reasonably old uh, machine probably about mm, five six years old so if you're on a modern machine you're obviously going to find these build times are much less especially with um, modern processors having or potentially having more cores the build size you might find is a little bit larger because software tends to grow over time um, I think I think the last time I looked at this the minimum uh, partition size for the operating system was 9 gigabytes and that's that was with virtually no room to breathe um, so I'd say if you're looking for a um, a build on a minimum amount of space, probably 10 gigabytes to leave you a little bit of room, but I certainly wouldn't go really any, any smaller than 16 and preferably make it 32 or even you know, 40, 50, 60 gigabytes, especially if you're thinking about going on and doing Beyond Linux from scratch where you can actually install a, a proper desktop with applications. So as I say, take these figures with a little bit of a pinch of salt. Um, just take into account that they're based on old old timings. Prerequisites, there's some information about um, background of LFS, about um, 
how to build software. These are quite detailed, these links, but very interesting if you've never um, looked into it before but are interested in learning. Um, yeah, these, this is about the standards that LFS tries to adhere to. So there's these three standards, the primary standards, and it gives the reasons for these or what the standards are, the requirements for each of the each of these three standards. Then there's the rationale for the packages in the book. So why have the Linux from Scratch team chosen these particular packages as part of the basic Linux from Scratch system? Well, obviously some of these will be absolutely necessary. For example, the compiler GCC is absolutely necessary, otherwise we're not going to get anything compiled. Um, likewise, GLibC is like the central C library. Um, as it says, nothing will run without it, basically. Then there's other packages which are either convenience, for example, there's a, an editor called Vim, which is part of the package, uh, part of the installation. And there's other tools such as XZ and GZIP and so on, which we need to extract the source packages, the tarballs. So that's that's quite interesting to read if you're thinking, well, what, why have they got that in there? I don't see any point read it and it gives a quick comment as to what it does. Also things like Util Linux, it tells you know why it's there. It's a necessary package. It's got lots of utility programs so you could probably get away with not installing it but you'd probably have a very hard time actually doing anything without it. A bit about typography there. So what the um, layout of the book is, how it appears, bold um, writing has got the commands and so on. So I won't go through that. Again, this is something you can go through yourself. So there's a bit about the layout of the book. Introduction bit we're in at the moment. Um, or we will be in. Um, just explains how to uh, prepare for the um, Linux from scratch installation. The second bit is actually preparing for the build. So we make a partition for the new operating system, download the packages and um, uh, compile the temporary tools. The third bit is about compiling a cross tool chain, so it's not a, a cross compiling tool chain in the strictest sense, but it does use the same techniques. Um, and then the biggest part of the book is the actual LFS system build. So what we do in the LFS uh, installation is you build a temporary system which you use to build the final system and the idea of this is to get away from the host system which is the one you boot with initially to build a Linux from scratch system and the final system you don't want to have any knowledge of or any connection to the system you booted from so that's why there's several stages to the build. Then the appendix is quite interesting there's lots of information about the packages that are installed and um, some of the scripts that are installed. Um, the Linux from Scratch team have um, kindly created scripts, boot scripts and so on, so we don't have to create them from scratch or copy and paste them. Um, we can just install them, but they're all listed there to peruse and examine. Um, yeah, errata, sometimes, very occasionally, it's not very often, there are um, mistakes found in the book after it's been published. So there's a link there which will take you back to the Linux from Scratch website um, to uh, see, if, see if there are any errors. So the next bit is the introduction where we actually start building the system. I'm not going to continue any further at the moment because um, I'm not actually, what you can see on the screen is not actually the environment that I'm going to be building in uh, as part of the demonstration. Um, what I'm going to be doing, because it's a machine that's got no operating system on it, it's got an empty hard disk on it, we need to have some way of booting a system that we can build from. And I've chosen um, Endeavor OS to boot from, um, basically because it's got all the tools needed to build Linux from scratch without having to do any modifications to the uh, live image. We can just boot it and start building Linux from scratch just like that. Um, other distributions, if you want to use a different Linux distribution, by all means do that, but be prepared to have to install other uh, packages 
to get um, the system into a state where we can start building Linux from scratch. If you need some help with that information, I have got a set of playlists which uh, demonstrate how to install the packages for certain popular distributions. If you go to my channel on YouTube, click on the playlists tab, and it's this one here, host Linux configuration for LFS chapter 2.2. If you just click on view full playlist, there's I think a dozen videos there for different distributions. So for example, if you're using Linux Mint, that one will show you what packages you'd need to install Linux Mint for. You can see there's Endeavor OS there. If you do actually play it, you'll find there's nothing much to do at all. And that's, that, that, that's again, that's why I'm going to be booting from that. Um, as I can just get going straight away without having to worry about installing extra packages. So what I'm going to do now, as I say, this is not the system I'm on. What I'm going to do is get rid of this and I'm going to boot the machine that I've got. I've got a USB stick in there with the Endeavoros already burnt onto it. That'll all be on the Endeavoros web page um, on how to do that. You can see it's booted up now because there's no other operating system to boot. And what I'll do is just wait for this to start up, which won't take too long. And when it's finished, it'll come up with a little menu. There it is. I'll just click on, let's get the right mouse, see you later. Uh, just to get rid of that. So what I need to do now is I need to get the browser up to view the book on the internet. So obviously you need an internet connection, preferably um, an internet connection that's wired, not wireless. If you do wireless, you won't get Linux from scratch connecting to the internet straight away because there is no um, capability for wireless connection by default in the Linux from scratch installation. You'd have to jump into the Beyond the Linux from scratch to set that up, and it's a lot more complicated than um, a wired. A wired, you just plug it in, and assuming the drivers are set up in the kernel, it'll just work magically like that. So I thoroughly recommend a wired connection. Next thing I need to get up is a terminal. So what I need to do now is just reorganize these windows so that A, they're visible. Uh, let's do this one first. Just make this a little bit larger, but not too large. try and get these side by side and what I'll do is this is keen on popping to the side of the window right snapping just bring that down there now I'm going to leave this just a little bit higher up because um, I've had comments about people can't see the command I'm typing in and the subtitles come up at the bottom of the screen I've got the subtitles on so I'll just leave that a little bit above there it doesn't seem to want to snap to the bottom there, but that's not a problem. So what I'll do here is get that Linux from scratch, the website. And go to the um, yeah, Linux from scratch, just click here and read online. And there's the current stable one. Right, so I'll just make changes to the size of this. Let's see if I can make the um just check that. 
Okay, so close it down. Right, default zoom. I'll just put this a little bit bigger. Let's try 120. Yeah, if I make it too big, then some of the commands might get lost off the side of the monitor. So, change the preferences here. Right, I'm going to put unlimited scroll back in case I need to go back. Appearance. Sure, if that's easy to read or not. Right. Let's see how we go with that. Hopefully, hopefully that's big enough. Um, maybe make that just a little bit bigger. And I've also got to check for the size. You want to make, yeah, 100 columns. I want 80 columns, really. At least 80 columns. 100 is way big enough. Um, actually, didn't change the size. Oh, there it is. It's showing me how big it is. Uh, but basically, because when we come to configure the kernel, um, the menu part of the kernel uh, kernel won't work if the screen width is less than 80 characters so bear with me while I just set this up if I do this now it just makes it easier for you to read if you need to read anything on the screen uh, let's try and make that a bit smaller it's a bit too wide uh, let's try it that way okay Right, yeah, I'll leave it like that. That's a reasonable width and size of the um, font. So I'll just bring this down here a little bit. 41 lines, that's not bad. And I'll just make this a little bit wider. Just worried that we might lose some commands when we're copying and pasting them. Okay, so let's get rid of these tabs. So what we've got here, if I return to where I was before, so um, let's get back to exactly where we were, which was here. So, yep, I had to build a Linux from scratch system. If we just click next. And just takes you to the next page and it goes into a bit more detail about what the chapters are um, what happens in each chapter then we've got a section on what packages have been updated to what versions if that's important to you and what patches have been added and removed as well there's a change log there, so this is all the changes I've made since the last version of Linux Scratch. They do them every six months, so these are the changes that have been made since 10.0 six months ago. And there's more resources here if you want to find out more information. Um, there's an IRC chat there, mailing list and so on to get more information. If you want help, there's more help here. Um, I, I will try and help you if you have problems, but um, uh, my time is uh, very restricted. So uh, if you're looking for a quick answer, you probably are better off going to the Linux from Scratch team um, or maybe Reddit, other places on the internet, Stack Exchange, that sort of place possibly. 
Um, as I say, I will try and answer every question. I, I do read the comments, um, but you may not get an immediate answer. That's the only thing.